Chief uh, Justice of India and asked him to take Suomoto action, but he did not. Uh, so this was in, uh, uh, in, in, in the background of uh, the, the, the anger of the Bhagwa people that uh, this kind of uh, protest cannot be tolerated and uh, it is going against their, their, their plans and their strategy uh, to uh, put Muslims especially, uh, of course, and others also, I suppose, uh, all marginalized people who do not have uh, uh, proper papers, I mean, Dalits don't have proper papers and Adivasis don't have proper papers, and also Muslims also, a majority of Muslims be, being poor and illiterate, they don't have proper papers. That, so they wanted to put all these people on the sidelines and on the margin, uh, uh, snatch their nationality from them. So these protests were very much, uh, I mean, uh, cause of anger and anguish in the uh, 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 to the people of, 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 of a certain ideology, and they wanted to teach them a lesson. When they failed, uh, when they came uh, with their firearms and uh, shot at the people in Shainbagh, in Jamia Nagar, and other places, and, and they did not succeed, then they. Uh, 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 plan to to attack them uh, in a big way, and this was this happened in northeast district and on the 23rd of February when Mr. Kapil Mishra came there and threatened in the uh, in in the presence of the DCP who is the highest police authority in that area uh, and said that if these people are not removed we will remove them by force. So this is what happened and and they had. Uh, according to my understanding and uh, uh, proofs that I had collected during my visit, official visit to the, uh, to the area, affected area on, uh, on the 2nd of March, we found that uh, Muslim houses, Muslim shops, Muslim workplaces, Muslim offices, Muslim garages were uh, pinpointed and attacked in the same area uh, if uh, houses and shops of other communities were located, they were not attacked. So this all, and, and also I got some, uh, some, 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 some proof uh, from uh, three schools over there, the Rajdhani school, the DPR school, and also the Arun, Arun school, that people from outside had come and they had stayed there for 24 hours. And these young people who were well-built and who were uh, using hoods and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, I mean, they were uh, camouflaging and these people took over the schools and maybe other buildings also and they were going out in small trucks and attacking uh, houses and shops and buildings and then coming back. So all this was planned. I, I knew this and I said this when we uh, uh, issued our first report on the 4th of March. We said this very much that the riots were planned and a certain community was, was, was targeted. And after that, I wrote a letter to the uh, concerned minister, Mr. Revenue, uh, asking him to, to, to establish uh, a, 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 an inquiry committee, uh, but he did not respond. So we waited and waited and waited. And then the Minority Commissions Act allows us to uh, establish such committees ourselves. So we did it. On the 9th of March, we did it. And then the committee started uh, meeting uh, once they met in our own office, thereafter they met in other places. But before they could really go into the act, uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, attacked us and uh, their work was very much affected. And uh, for the next uh, two, 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 two and a half uh, uh, months, uh, roughly, uh, they could not uh, properly uh, properly function. Still, they were doing it by by Zoom and all that. Uh, and uh, once the lockdown was was was, was not taken off, but uh, uh, it was uh, uh, somewhat lifted in the first uh, unlockdown. Uh, they started again, and they asked me. The the chairman of the committee asked me to uh, give them some more time. So we gave them until the thirtieth of June. Uh, but they were quick enough and they uh, presented their report on the 27th. After that, we spent some time on getting it edited and formatted and designed and all that, and we printed it. And thereafter, on the 13th of July, we sent copies by hand 
to the Lieutenant Governor, to the Chief Minister, to the Deputy Chief Minister, to all the ministers, and also to the Speaker of uh, the, the, the uh, Legislative Assembly of Delhi. Uh, and then we waited for a few days. On 16th, we uh, released the report uh, 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 to the press and also uh, to the world media and national media and world media. And this is, this is the story behind it. Uh, so actually, we wanted to put the, these things on record. We, we don't have great hopes that somehow uh, this, uh, this is going to change all things. They, they are trying. I mean, the establishment is trying, uh, and the central government is trying, police is trying to change the narrative and to turn the victims into, into, into planners and executors of the riots, which is, of course, which is wrong. And this is the, uh, the, 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 the gist of the report which has come uh, from this committee. They were freely working. We did not interfere in their work in any way. And whatever they said is, uh, is, 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 has been printed. We did not uh, change it in any way. Uh, so uh, 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 this, is, this, this is the background of the report. And uh, 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 I think that uh, uh, maybe it will not uh, affect the course that the central government and Delhi police are, are, are taking. But in any case, this has jolted the public opinion and international public opinion also, people will know. And for many years, I think this report will be uh, remembered and I think also it will be presented in courts. Uh, so we have done, uh, I hope we have done a, a, a good job to, to bring the facts, the real facts uh, on record. And sir, I don't, sir. Uh, yes. Yes, one intervention. I don't think that uh, you have not achieved a lot. I think, uh, the report was being prepared, and I think that uh, the communal forces uh, might have got some clue about that, that uh, you are doing a very serious job. And that is why they tried to demonize you uh, in that uh, tweet incident, and they have said that you have uh, asked the Arab forces to come and intervene in India. This was all planned, and now, could, uh, now I could that understand. That is true. That is true. Yes, yeah. actually, not just the report. Uh, our our actions in the Northeast and other areas also, of course, but, but in the Northeast, from the 24th of February, we were intervening with the police, with LG, with CM, with the, the DCP, and, and we were sending them, them notices, letters and all that. Uh, and uh, so this was annoying them too much. And also we sent notices about Kapil Sharma, Kapil Mishra, uh, and uh, in their names. Uh, Sir, it is your success. I think it is your success that you have made uh, great intervention. I hope. That is why. I that hope is it why. will. I, yes, I hope yes. it will. It will. And it I will think we, we will come back again to you and we will ask about the challenges. I think uh, the best person to speak is uh, in this show, in this discussion, is uh, senior advocate M.R. Yes. Samsad Sahab. Yes, of M.R. Yes. Samsad Sahab has prepared wonderful report. I think I have read it. And it is full of empirical details, and he has done great thing because going against the tide is not very easy. And when media is reporting the police version as its own version, and it is saying that Jamia Milia Islamia, Aligarh Muslim University, Muslims community, protesters, they are responsible. He has, and his team, I think we must congratulate them. The team has meticulously taken, has great pain, they have collected all details. And the report is there and any person who reads that report with open mind will think that the culprit is sitting somewhere else and innocent people is in the jail. So I want and I request uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, M. M. R. Samsad, the senior advocate, to speak about the report and also his experience because it was very painful experience to go and meet with the people. And he has said that many people were not ready to share FIR because they were threatened. And they thought that if, you, if they speak with the, uh, the fact-finding report, the police may come and police may harass them further. Sir, uh, please tell us about uh, your experience. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Abhaji. Dr. Khan has already uh, you know, put forth the background of the entire thing. Uh, Devika ji is here and uh, she'll be speaking after me. So uh, she'll also put forth certain uh, certain important facts. Uh, see this report, I'll just put uh, in two, three lines. This report is certainly a, a report of a report which uh, shows collective effort of all the nine members 
who work together so the 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 the, the achievement uh, goes to everybody equally i was just there to coordinate and see that things come in proper perspective and that uh, probably we have succeeded to a great extent personally i may have had uh, and still have uh, so many uh, so many other things to say and we can add that when i am speaking individually so if i would have added my personal view probably this report would have gone in few more pages but uh, this is a this is a report of all nine members and uh, they have put it like this the uh, if i need to speak about the report then uh, then probably um, many many things have been already put so without repeating what has already been put in the report i will uh, i i would like to uh, to give you a, a a little different perspective to it dr khan has already said that uh, see the background was how this this entire caa movement was going on and and how certain people and lot of people did not like it the entire country was uh, was agitated with this and there were lots of uh, 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 protests in different part of the country which were which were uh, very aggressively taking a stand that see this caa is um, is a wrong legislation it is highly discriminatory it has no place in the constitutional setup of our country in that background delhi was also charged and and obviously delhi had taken lead in this matter uh, the university's uh, students had taken lead in this matter so so that was was certainly one of the factor that these people wanted you know, to create a serious disturbance to disrupt this entire pro protest going throughout the country and that is what they have reflected in the charge sheet subsequently see if you if you if you read these charge sheets in which uh, uh, in which uh, uh, the conspiracy case of uh, murder of mr ankit sharma has been set up you will get to know that what was going on in the mind of people who were who who did not like this protest despite the fact that the charge sheets uh, are prepared uh, with focus to relate the issues with the evidences there is a charge sheet or series of charge sheets in which there is a narrative which has been set up and large part of that narrative is how this caa protest was undesirable uh, uh, movement so so that is that is the background now why this caa protest was uh, was there and why uh, people were uh, were agitated so much that is the that is the issue of discussion and nobody is discussing this now that time certainly civil society discussed that issue today that focus has shifted on delhi rights and police has taken a stand that delhi rights was because of caa why the caa that is most important caa was an issue which in indian history for the first time an issue which is so basic which is so important for an individual's existence was related with the religion of the concerned person that was the issue and that's why people were so agitated in which civil society had come on the road obviously large number of muslims were participating in this but there were lot of civil society members who were there this was the legislation which tried to legitimize the concept of in a way the 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 the, the people have been saying islamophobia so this is the legislation which somehow tried to severe the relationship of an individual without any religion with the state because if i am an individual i have certain relationship with the state the government religion has no place but since the individual's existence itself was made relatable to the religion so the religion came in between and that's why 
even united nations few bo uh, bodies took a stand by saying that it is highly discriminatory legislation it's not only indians who were uh, who were agitating the entire uh, in the in the in the world at so many places this agitation was going on just to reflect that this is a wrong legislation and this has no place in a democratic system so that was the background and if that legislation was being protested by uh, by individuals in the country rather than taking it into a proper perspective you impose certain communal right over the head of those protesters this is what in in fact has happened and 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 in this background as dr khan has stated that see there were many legislate uh, many uh, many uh, leaders who were making provocative statements and 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 a uh, few leaders went to the extent of saying that uh, if somebody uh, will not listen uh, from uh, boli then we will use goli so this kind of a statement and these this stage had reached and and at some stage somebody went there and and did the same thing in majpur on 23rd of february what ram bhakt gopal did in jamia and 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 uh, um, uh, somebody uh, did in in uh, shahin bagh so that is the background now coming back to the report i would i would say that see uh, obviously it was uh, it was uh, 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 a task which was certainly difficult considering the entire overall uh, overall situation right now it became further difficult uh, because of uh, the lockdown um, situation and restrictions on movement but um, see in the report we have been able to put this entire background and then we have said how uh, uh, how the individuals felt during the communal rights and how their issues have been dealt with by the administration and police and civil society so so post 23rd of february we have dealt with the situation by recording the testimonies of individuals to to narrate their their understanding and their situations how how uh, the attack took place how uh, the administration responded and how the police personnel responded to uh, to the problems that they were facing those days then uh, then we have gone to uh, to explain as to how the police has responded to the entire situation the uh, in in all communal violence is not this violence the role of police becomes extremely important court comes much later in this case even courts were approached but uh, somehow uh, the courts assistance was not so much in this case see the role of police in this case has been has been uh, we have already narrated this i just want to elaborate a bit on this see once communal violence takes place or somebody is targeted and attacked the individual first thinks to go to the police and seek uh, seek assistance there are many testimonies where these uh, these individuals are saying that see the police's gypsy was standing nearby where the the attacks were happening we went and requested the police that please help us these rioters have entered our home they are doing arson they are looting our stuff they are beating our daughters but the police were not moving from their gypsies there is second uh, type of problem that you know uh, when uh, uh, the police was not found at that location they kept calling the police many uh, on many calls the police took the uh, took the phone and they said assured that they will be helping them but they never help many instances when the police never responded to the calls so this is how the police responded during the riots we have already seen on video camera how how the uh, the police at some places they were breaking uh, cctv cameras uh, installed by the uh, delhi government 
uh, there is an instance where the uh, police personnel itself is participating with stone painters and they are throwing stones. So the, these are the situations we have been able to put uh, in the report during the riot. After the riot also, you know, there is a serious problem in registering the FIR. Once you go to the police station and ask for help saying that this is the problem I am facing, please take the complaint. First of all, there is a lot of resistance in lodging the, uh, the complaint. Once you accept the complaint and put the diary number, then only the process of criminal justice starts. Now, at the very first instance, if you have so much of difficulty in, in registering your complaint as diary number, then there is a serious issue and we all need to raise this issue and discuss about this issue and like other communal in other communal violences in this violence also the problem has been there then comes second stage those who who were able to get the diary number the fir was not registered for long time even even today many of them don't know whether their complaint were registered as fir or not Third stage is that if you register the complaint as an FIR, then you don't do investigation. See, everything happened in three, four days. But, uh, but uh, uh, an investigating agency has no business to take five or 10 or 20 FIRs and complete the investigations, set a narrative demonize the people named in that FIR and charge sheet and the other set of persons, FIRs, are not investigated upon. If that is not investigated upon and on the other hand, one set of FIRs have been investigated upon belonging to a particular set of persons and after investigation, you release it to the general public that comes into public domain and then you start saying that this is how the entire communal violence happened whereas the other set of facts have not even been investigated upon that is a very very serious issue that has happened in this communal right we have put this in our report now the issue is that Police's role has been discussed so much. Many things have come in the media and, and, and it is already in public domain. As far as these targeted attacks, non-registration of FIRs, it is not as if we have said it for the first time. There is a lot of doubt of general public and civil society, accused complainants, victims, every section of the society, those who have not uh, 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 got their, their complaint registered, they are aggrieved from the police's action today. Now, if there is so much of problem and so much of questions about police's action, why you don't become transparent? The police has given an affidavit in the high court saying that, sorry, we will not disclose to whom all we have arrested. Though we have arrested 1,400 people, I will not disclose the FIR that what all FIRs we have, uh, we have registered. Yes, we have registered 754 FIRs. Yes, we will not disclose all the charge sheets. Though we have, um, we have prepared 180 charge sheets and selective charge sheets have been released to the public domain or the media to set a particular narrative. So these are larger issues. These are larger issues need to be discussed. Now, at this stage, if the police arrest somebody without disclosing their name and after three years, as it has happened in the past or 10 years, the police doesn't find any evidence to justify the detention, to justify the conviction. The person, the poor person uh, uh, is let off by the court and thereafter nobody talks about the, um, uh, his problem. So the basic question is at many levels that, you know, from registration of complaint to registration of FIR and investigation of the case and then thereafter uh, arrest, etc. And then you don't talk why did you arrest that person? 
so these are larger questions which civil society needs to know needs to understand and ask them that sorry this is what see i will put you an example in muzaffarnagar uh, violence hundreds of fir's had been registered but we we see today how this entire criminal justice system has been played around now there is no conviction the people has just been have just been let off now uh, one set of people certainly have been convicted now if the same line we are choosing despite that experience of very recent past then that is very sad state of affairs we all need to discuss about it your voice is not coming i think you are on mute mr samsa thank you very much uh i think uh, we all have read your report the report the fact finding report and uh, for some time i am also doing some research on police and your report is very important as far as police reform is concerned because uh, it it focuses the very serious issue that if democratic india has to survive if minority rights have to be protected then police must be made accountable police cannot say no to minority commission police cannot say no to the marginalized people when they seek their uh, help now i think uh, another another member of the fact finding committee devika prasad ji she is also with us and i think uh, her observation is very important and i would like to say um the contradiction that women were at the forefront of protesting against sectarian and religion based citizenship amendment act and i myself has seen and witnessed protest in sahin bag and other areas where women taking their children they used to sit whole night in that cold biting uh, winter and see where uh, and see where giving slogans and see uh, and, and see where singing national anthem they were protecting democracy they were protecting secularism of this country but what has happened the police and the gundas and the hindutva forces they have attacked our own women and as report has said that there is incident of verbal violence physical violence and also sexual violence on them most unfortunate women have been targeted because of their religious identity their burkas have been uh, torn off and inappropriate comments have been made related to uh, their religion and their faith so uh, devika prasad ji please tell us uh, that issue the issue of gender and violence uh thank you thanks very much for uh, having all of us and for having me and it's really it's always such a such an honor to be with um everybody here and uh, i must say uh, if i actually if i will speak about that issue but if i can actually touch on uh, a few things a little bit larger than that and i'll come to that uh one thing that i i must uh, also you know I, at least for me personally is that i it was a great uh honor to be on this fact finding committee but it also really came i think with a burden of responsibility in terms of you know ensuring that the true narrative that a, that a narrative which must be said that you know that that really i mean irrespective of everything which is being uh that really comes from the affected persons and that context i think that was something that for me uh was you know it always felt how can one do this especially in the restrictions and all that uh you know we had to work under um but i think like shamshad sir said we just you know we managed to come together and we uh, and i mean we got through it and i think all of us would have probably wanted to say more but uh you know we had to get it done and and i think we did what we could in the time that we had now i actually you know for my perspective what i feel is that incidents like this and findings like ours uh what they really show us is the absolute impunity that we are all currently living under the fact that you could have the kinds of speeches which were being made in open 
from January of 2020. And this comes, I must say, on the back of, you know, the situation at Jamia, the situation at JNU, the situation at, uh, I mean, in when we look at Delhi, uh, Jamia, and I mean, all of those, you know, the violence that was perpetrated by different sets of people, including the Delhi police uh, in December 2019. So really, it truly was something which, you know, there was a buildup for sure. And, uh, and unfortunately, very unfortunately, it culminated in, in what it did. And in that, all of that, there was also this absolutely unprecedented and truly amazing community-led, uh, women-led, student-led, youth-led wave of protests across the country which to my mind, the distinction is that these protests were never co-opted by anybody, not any political organization, not any civil society organization. And I say that responsibly coming from civil society, uh, not anyone. It was truly an intuitive and very organic uh, protest that has come from different sections of society and very proudly led uh, mainly by Muslim women. And I think, you know, what everybody is pointing to that we're not only looking what this whole incident and what everything which precipitated it tells us is the criminalization of dissent on one hand and the total impunity for the breakdown of rule of law, for inciting violence and for a majoritarian discourse, which is... Uh, you know, both from, I mean, from state bodies, political leaders. So all of this is what is contending with each other. And uh, unfortunately, I would say that we probably can't expect that, you know, it would have been any different uh, because of everything that we had seen in Delhi in the months preceding also. Uh, so, I mean, that is one thing I think to say. The other thing also is that, uh, you know, I think marking such breakdowns, uh, it becomes even more apparent that it probably was, that it was planned or that it was enabled by different forces, state and non-state. Seeing that the Delhi police had all the powers and didn't have to go to any uh, political authority to exercise that powers that it has under the Delhi Police Act to prevent, prohibit, uh, and take action if violence has broken out, the Delhi police could have done that on its own. It did not need any court intervention. It did not need any intervention. The Delhi Police Act empowers the commissioner to take certain actions, very specific actions. None of those actions were taken. And it is the same pattern we see in all incidents of mass communal violence, where police don't exercise the powers that they lawfully have. Uh, so now, I mean, if we take, if we strip it away of of everything else, of the, of the communal uh, uh, picture, etc., if we just see it as an absolute failure of a lawful body, which is there to maintain law and order in a city. It just wasn't able to do that. It failed to do that also. And why? And now when we answer the question of why, then we come to those very, very, you know, insidious and, 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 uh, beyond problematic, but I mean, I don't even know, it's, you know, it's so difficult to even quantify it, that then it does have to do with uh, bias, majoritarianism, a communal, uh, you know, I mean, an underpinning or an overt showing. So truly, I mean, the Delhi Minorities Commission's uh, response, while we are praising it as we should, because it was truly proactive. But that is simply the response that any institution should have taken, that the Supreme Court of India should have taken, that the National Human Rights Commission should have taken, right here in Delhi's, uh, right here in Delhi, not even anywhere far away. And we didn't see those responses. So we truly are in a state of impunity, of institutional co-opting or, uh, you know, just absolute abdication of duty. And, um, and I think, like Sir pointed out, and all of us are probably thinking in our minds that truly our, you know, the state of democracy, the nature of democracy itself is already in peril.
so now i'm making that's a statement to make but the fact that all of this has happened indicates the absolute failure uh now on this question of uh, the other thing also that i think is important is the in you know the the absolute the inadequacy of the criminal justice system to deal with mass violence now we have a sort of a catch 22 situation that when we point to complicity of the law enforcement agency active connivance of the law enforcement agency uh, uh inaction of the law enforcement agency now that same law enforcement agency which is you know is accused of all of these very serious charges and which of now there is at least evidence is coming forth that same agency is also to investigate and get to the bottom of what happened who were perpetrators who are victims so you know what do we do with all of this now where is the legitimacy of the delhi police to actually carry out its mandated role uh as the as the investigating body as the as the police and we can see i mean in this order that recently came from the special commissioner in which uh, it was reported i think in the indian express in which he said that uh, some hindu arrests are being made of hindus and so the the community is feeling you know uh, uh, the the community is feeling there's a degree of resentment those are the words which were used and so he then ordered uh, all of the supervising officers and investigating officers to take due care and precaution in making arrests that no arbitrary arrest should be made that all arrests should be made by backed by sufficient evidence that evidence is to be discussed with the prosecution now all of this is not something that has to come into an order it is already the lawful mandate of the police and the code of criminal procedure lays all of this down but here we have an order which is being passed and said that because one community is feeling a degree of resentment all of this must be done and i think there's been some you know there's been some trying to backtrack etc but this is quite clear and we know what we are dealing with so we really are in a situation of how do we move forward when the you know the institutions which are actually supposed to lend justice act uh, to uphold the law are the same institutions which in many ways are which are the ones who are perpetrating uh, the worst kind of uh, criminality and you know human rights violations constitutional uh, uh, rights violations etc so i don't know the answer to this question we've tried to attend to it in some way through our own report but i mean i think you know this is really a question for all of us uh in terms of i mean so not just this incident but you know in terms of our criminal justice system more largely now on the issue of women and gender based violence it actually uh uh i mean i think that it becomes even more difficult and even more problematic uh for this kind of justice system and certainly for this kind of police uh which is you know male dominated and uh, of course i think dictated by there are community undertones which not even undertones i mean which is you know uh, you can say uh, majoritarian how is this police ever to ensure that uh, women are to be given justice of any kind we've seen what's happened in bihar in araria where um a, a victim who was deposing before a judge uh who only asked for what is her due under the law when she said i cannot understand oh i'm sorry my when she said that i cannot understand what is going into my statement she is fully within her right to say i must know what is going into my statement she was immediately arrested and in, and two of her uh, support persons are also arrested so you know the criminal justice system is not at all uh, i mean forget being kind it can't even respond to women in the way that it needs to 
so I think, you know, the difficulties that others will have, it's compounded when we look at what women will go through. And especially as we found, at least in terms of testimonies and what women themselves have said, that the police themselves were complicit in, uh, you know, communal uh, comments and violent uh, actions with, you know, sexual connotation and dangerous connotations. So I don't have answers for this. I do feel that, you know, that set of, I think the, the probably the cases of sexual violence have not even reached the justice system. At least if some others have reached the justice system, these cases will not even have reached the justice system as yet. And uh, I do wonder if, if uh, it's even fair or right to ask for this to go forward because we know that it's going to be a such a long hard road uh, for everybody who's fighting these cases so um, i'm you know i really tried to try and think of something forward looking to say but uh, it's i think right now it really is very difficult to to think in 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 that way thank you devika ji uh, two questions have come up one is about uh, uh, the word riot and pogrom. I think I have read the fact finding report. It has said that it is not riot, it is pogrom. And it has mentioned it that uh, the media was wrong to portray it as a fight between two communities. I looked up also dictionary pogrom, uh, where you deliberately try to destroy the pogrom word is destruction, devastation. So pogrom is there. The second question is, and I think that 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 is very important. And that and the ne next round of our discussion will largely touch that issue. What is the road ahead? Uh, the report has been made. The report is public. But I think we have done half of it. Unless justice is achieved, unless those who are culprits, they are brought to book, unless compensation is given, and unless we make riots and violence and pogrom history, I think uh, uh, this uh, report cannot be termed a success. So, uh, uh, Dr. Zafrul Islam Khan, I think we should begin with you. A very interesting fact, uh, the print reported recently that uh, several reports uh, related to communal violence were with Home Ministry and somebody filed a RTI and they were not able to get it. So then the matter was brought to Central Information Commission and then commissions wrote that where have gone these reports, the 13 reports are not to be found on the website of the Home Ministry. And the Home, Home Ministry says we don't know. So there has been a deliberate uh, attempt by the vested interests, by the communal forces to even delete those files, to delete those files. But you have done a great thing that the file is open uh, in public domain. It, uh, it has been largely circulated. But communal media, mainstream media is not much talking about it. Alternative media is doing some uh, stories about it. So, sir, you are no longer the chairperson. And uh, you will be remembered as one who has given life to the so-called dead minority commission um, body. So do you think that there will be another Zafrul Islam Khan at uh, Delhi's uh, minority commission and, and the half? work which you have done, some Saad Sahab has done, will be carried forward? See, I cannot tell future what will happen in future. Maybe a better person will come. Uh, but I must assure that the power that the, the commission, this commission and other commissions also have, I think all of them have uh, similar uh, powers. If they use them, uh, they can do a lot. But if they don't use them and just say, uh, find... Uh, excuses they will not do so uh, anybody uh, we have at least shown that uh, you can use these powers and you can achieve a lot and not just this report they have, we have we have broken many gr new grounds actually uh, during these three years so i hope this will uh, this, this will happen in future and maybe better people will come uh, about this report i think uh, if it achieves uh, to uh, get uh, get justice for the victim, that will be the greatest thing. But also, our uh, 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 target should be that such events do not happen. This is very important. If these people get justice, 
the victim get get, get justice now i think this will uh, put a, put a break i mean not fully but at least to, to some extent it will it will put a break on the plannings and on the uh, the, 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 the kind of plots that uh, a certain uh, lobby or certain uh, group of people, maybe Hindutva people, uh, has, you know, uh, to put minorities and uh, marginalized people in this country uh, on the margins. Uh, so uh, if, if uh, that happens, uh, I hope this, this report will have uh, achieved its, 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 uh, its, its aim and uh, its target. Sir, do you think that if you, if the report uh, uh, had been prepared earlier and you would have got at least one month, two months time, things could have been different? You see, uh, you should not look at this, uh, you know, at something, a question of time. Uh, if we were just looking at time, it could not have been published even now. But we were working very hard, day and night, not just this report. Uh, at the end of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, at the end of, of our tenure, uh, in the last week, we presented four reports actually to the government. Uh, all of them were important, but this this one, of course, being uh, very much uh, in in the media and also in in uh, political circus, in, in, in circles, it got uh, that kind of attention. But other reports are also like the report on anti-Sikh riots, uh, that the survivors of the anti-Sikh riots of 1984 uh, have still not got justice. And uh, some very uh, strange facts came to our to, 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 to light when we uh, did this, uh, this study. Uh, one of them is that uh, uh, the, uh, the plots that were given uh, to the victims are still not freehold. It's still the state uh, owns them. So we have recommended that uh, these plots should be made freehold and given to, uh, to the victims. This is very important. I mean, you cannot uh, keep them waiting. I mean, these uh, something like 35 years uh, and it's still they don't uh, uh, own the land on which their house is built. Uh, same thing is about the women in uh, Northeast District. I mean, this uh, study was uh, conducted before the riots, but it is very important to know how uh, minority women are living, what is what are their aims, what are their, their goals, what are their dreams. And this brings out uh, quite well uh, their problems and, and, and the duties of the state to raise their status. Uh, and, the th and the fourth was our uh, third year's annual report, which gives you all the details about what we have been, de been doing all these uh, in the last year of our tenure, despite the problems of elections, because of course, during the elections, uh, even before the election, there is model court, uh, during which our bureaucracy does not allow us to work anything. And then came the COVID uh, pandemic. Be despite all that, we were able at the end of our, our, our tenure to present four reports to the government. And by doing that, we uh, actually uh, completed all our plans and, and, and we did not leave anything behind for the next commission. Next commission will start uh, its slate as new and they will plan and they will do whatever they wanted. So I think it's not just a matter of time. Uh, if you use time uh, properly, if you uh, do it judiciously, you will uh, be able to achieve what you wanted and, and, and what you planned. Sir, uh, uh, please uh, answer it very briefly. I think uh, I am personally interested in political questions also. Uh, we know that uh, the Delhi government has been supported by the secular uh, voters and uh, secular people. Overwhelmingly, they have supported it, but uh, the Delhi political leadership, they, they, they were silent when people were dying. But can we see some hope when uh, there is a fight and tussle between the Delhi government and, uh, and, and police and LG over the appointment of uh, public persecutor? Yes, of course. I think uh, before I answer this, I should also mention that during the first few days of the riots, the Delhi government 
or its uh, chief minister and ministers did not do anything uh, to stop the riot. But after the riots, they did something. They they started uh, paying compensation, which is very important. Also, I mean, of course, uh, stopping the riots say uh, it's uh, is, is is much more important. But even after the riots, it has been a tradition in our country that uh, victims are not paid. I mean, the the uh, victims of Muzaffar Muzaffar Nagar were uh, a rare, you know, uh, instance where victims were paid by the state. Uh, so here also. Uh, the Delhi government paid compensation. It is not very ad adequate, and our report has said that. Uh, but still, they did it, and now I think uh, the, the 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 there is a tussle. This this tussle is because uh, there are attempts by the BJP and also by the Congress to put the Aam Aadmi Party in the dock and to somehow say that they were responsible uh, for the riots. Uh, and I think this has. Uh, uh, made them uh, take this decision, which is which is right. Uh, uh, you cannot give liberty to the police, which is trying to change the narrative to appoint its own solicitors, its own uh, lawyers. Uh, I think if uh, that happens, justice will not be done. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zafrul Islam Khan. Now, I think um, I should come back to uh, Advocate Samsad. Sir, we have... Uh, radio report several recommendations have been made uh, some of them are that the minority commission should approach uh, central or delhi government they should file appropriate petition in the appropriate court uh, also the setting up of five member independent committee given the political situation where Talking about the rights of the marginalized community is seen as going against the major, majority community. So from legal point of view, from the point of view of civil society, what we can do to, to carry forward our agenda for peace and justice? Thank you. This is the, uh, this is the most important question and and most serious question which needs to be addressed not only by uh, persons like us but the entire system the civil society the 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 police system the the bureaucratic uh, setup the political leadership now ultimately what happens see wherever there is a a, a communal right Recently, there were two judgments by Delhi High Court. One was in relation to 84 riots, in which one gentleman has been convicted, and that was 84. There was another comment, uh, another uh, police atrocity relating to Hashimpura case, which has been now decided at the level of High Court and now Supreme Court. What the case is? The High Court is very, very categorical. They, they say about Hashimura case that it was a targeted killing. About the crime of 1994. Crime against humanity. High Court's observation is that he, it was engineered by political actors. Now, if you see the contemporaneous situation and uh, the situation before the riots, how many things have to be attributed to the political masters that is very well documented in public domain that how they have played a particular role in this riot. Despite all this, uh, I am not, uh, not saying in details about Gujarat and, and Muzaffar Nagar. They also faced the same thing. There was a boy called, uh, called Shahnawaz who was killed. And in counter, there was there were two brothers, Sachin and Gaurav, who were killed. Now, one set of attackers have been convicted. Another set of attackers have been, uh, have been uh, left free. Same way in Gujarat, the, 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 the picture that has come before this, come in public domain will shake you from your heart. Your conscience will start shaking. But still, the 
justice has not been delivered now it is the time when everybody should should help the system within their own way if there is a lawyer he should help the victim if there is a neighbor and his as uh, his his uh, his neighbor has has certain uh, certain uh, issue in court and he if he can stand as a witness on their behalf he has seen something he should come forward go to the court and and, and depose themselves that this is what they have seen the police system whatever they have done in the past they should they should forget that and they should uh, uh, do the investigation and arrest the correct people now there are many firs in which the uh, the uh, the attackers have been named only because they are influential people they have not been arrested why so even the in, even the court system in muzaffarnagar rights within 8 days the supreme court had started supervising the entire investigate investigation process the sit was reporting to the supreme court and they kept reporting for 6 months but this, is, this, this did not happen in this but even now it can be done see evidences can't disappear in in such a short span of time it can still be done but the 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 entire system has to wake up as far as our our uh, report is concerned see we were fact finding committee certainly we are at much better footing because this fact finding committee was constituted by a, a statutory commission which is empowered to do this and we have given this report till now nobody has been able to point out even a single line that is incorrect in our report if this this is correct and the recommendation is in the background of uh, of the facts that we have narrated in the body of report by every department should not accept this report and immediately act upon it by the compensation issue should be lingered on so much see these are poor people we have said that the very very little amount of compensation has been paid to them they, they need to be compensated with their actual damage see, there are many who have not even attended to till now uh, forget about in compensation so these are the issues which the government should take seriously and this is the report which gives them opportunity to immediately act upon it though are, they are not obliged to accept it or or they are not uh, the report is not binding upon them but they should realize the problem the seriousness of the issues the citizens ultimately these citizens these are citizens and they are suffering they are your own people if you don't care about their their problem what are you doing what are, what, what is the what is the duty of the government what the police is doing if they are not able to investigate the matter properly and the named uh, and they are not arresting the people who have been named in the fir so these are the issues at every stage we need some work you have to put your mic uh, you have to unmute yourself thank you uh, very much sir Uh, i have to ask some question about laws and judiciary uh, we don't know much about it uh, because you know uh, complex things well uh, we have heard uh, justice murli dharan he said something uh, when uh, the riots uh, broke out and he asked police i think you have also mentioned it in your report that he asked um, delhi police to file cases or fir against those who are giving provocative speeches and uh, uh, police uh, uh, advocate uh, mr tushar said that uh, at appropriate time it will be registered when that appropriate time will come i think uh, uh, is not is not uh, court uh, uh, taking note of that um four weeks of time uh, uh, were given is that time not over we have heard about prashant bhushan uh, doing court of contempt but if police uh, do not register cases against those who are responsible for delhi rise that uh, 
took the life of as many as uh, 55 people and injured more than 250 people is it not court of contempt when will the court take sue moto actions i think uh, we have heard about newspaper that court has taken sue moto action in that case and it was very historic moment but why court is so silent i think um, as a citizen i am asking sir we don't know much about law please educate us yeah as far as legal position is concerned you have mentioned about mr tushar mehta's statement of appropriate time i am really sorry to say that the statement is completely wrong and not only wrong but unfortunate reason i'll give you the kind of legal mechanism we have about registration of fir is like this if somebody says that see some cognizable offense has happened some serious offense has happened and goes to the police station supreme court says that the police has no option but to register the fir any judgment they said this 2014 in lalita kumari case they said five judges bench they summarized the entire situation and they said that it is not only obligatory it is mandatory for the police to register an fir once somebody reports cognizable offense to the police now what police can do police can only check whether after reading of the content of the complaint whether the offense reflected is cognizable or not beyond that there is no option with the police to register an fir they have to mandatorily register an fir there could be certain exception like uh, medical negligence family issues husband wife you know and you if you see there is a there is a triple talaq legislation in which that aspect also has been targeted to a particular community that you will register immediate fir this probably on this you will go against lalita kumari so, so that statement saying that appropriate time has not come that is completely against law there is no justification if i r should have been lodged immediately forthwith second if i r on which charge sheet has been filed and tahir hussain is inside the jail relates to conspiracy of killing of mr ankit sharma obviously any killing is unfortunate and mr ankit sharma's killing is also unfortunate but the police on its own has registered a fire on which charge sheet has been filed there are many other firs which the police on its own has registered a fire why can't the same same thing happen in other cognizable offenses including the statement of mr kapil mishra this is number one number two recent affidavit that has come in the delhi high court they are saying that see we have investigated and found that there is nothing credible to register an fir there is no actionable evidence to register an fir again this is against law you don't need to examine actionable evidence to register an fir you need this for filing charge sheet not for registration of fir now the civil society should ask the police that sir have you investigated every complaint before registration of fir have you found first actionable evidence to register fir and then you have lodged fir against tahir hussain and everybody was the answer is going to come from the police no then why this dual standard everywhere for one set of person you say that there is no actionable uh, evidence for other set of person first fir is registered and then you go and uh, and do the investigation so these are the larger issues should be should be spoken about 
the the civil society should come out and ask this question to these people ultimately it is a criminal justice process it can't be played around like this again please unmute mr thank Bagmore. you very much uh, sir and uh, now i should uh, move to devika ji i think uh, things are not very positive i think on at this time it appears and you have also said in your presentation you have also expressed uh, your concern and disappointment but we have to find a way we have to find a way the recommendation is here so uh would you like to say something yeah i mean uh so you know actually when sir referred to the hashimpura case i think that's that's a it's a story to tell in terms of it's a case in which the final judgment meant that uh, police officers were convicted and they were and you know acquittals were overturned by a higher court uh, and and in the same judgment the court actually did just like sir said i think it's probably one of the first admissions uh, that this was a targeted you know targeted attack and killing against a minority community that it speaks of institutional bias within that police force was the up police the using of the term institutional bias in itself is a i mean you know it's a game changer it's a total it's a precedent which hasn't happened before that same justice murli dharan was also the judge in court on the 26th of february who in this matter against when the petition was uh, taken to court uh, against kapil mishra parvesh verma and uh, one more leader i i'm sorry i can't remember the last name but um, in fact in court justice murli dharan did question the delhi police and uh, the you know government's counsel uh, in terms of the delay and the lack of acknowledgement of the delhi police as these uh, of these speeches as crimes on their own now that same institution within and uh, justice murli dharan at that stage on 26 february said that we will reconvene in 24 hours and i will want to hear from the delhi police about the registration of the fir and then i mean we all know what happened in terms of the it wasn't a transfer effected at at midnight but the sudden that now you must go that happened uh, you know very fast so we can see the wheels of a system in motion which even at a time i mean you know it's the same thing which is this attack on the delhi minorities commission when you have institutions which are working towards the lawful response the the uh, the response which is only there which is to be done those institutions are then stymied blocked obstructed uh, people are harassed people are uh, intimidated etc so you know we really are in this morass of this kind of system i think the the and the hashimpura judgment came after the entire case had to be transferred from the state of up to delhi it came after the dogged persistence of certain lawyers including vrinda grover who just kept on with the families and made sure that they never felt that they were alone or left alone uh and then finally i think you know a a, a collegium of i mean several lawyers uh, like rebecca john and others worked together to ensure that i mean to get that kind of ruling um but it took that much effort and and it took i think you know the the fact that justice murli dharan was on the bench also made a big difference so unfortunately it's also that our institutional cultures are not based in you know it is all personality led if you have somebody who is on the right side of the law and on the right side of just the mandated duty which they have you will have an institution which is which is on the uh, site of violence just like the delhi minorities commission in the middle of violence zafar saab and others were there who else was there nobody else was there and uh, civil society was there to their own you know great i mean to to dangers for themselves and i you know individual lawyers like shamshad sir were there but which other institution was there 
so uh, again, I do find that it's, I think that really, I think one, the power of documenting, the importance of documenting so that we have some record of, you know, a perspective, a perspective which is based on objective reason, fact, testimony, etc. That is something which on its own right now, I think that in itself is a big benchmark. I think the kind of message that Zafar Saab has been giving, that this is something which we have it, it comes from a mandated, from a government body, and it is truly documentation also for the future. Uh, I wish I could share Sir's, uh, I agree that when Sir says that we also need, you know, we need action at different levels. It is a legal fight. It is a systems fight. It is also a fight at the level of social relations. It's at a fight at the level of community, at the level of neighbor to neighbor, etc. And I think that, uh, you know, I mean, in the ethos which we still have, uh, all of that is also still there. There are people and neighbors who protected each other. There are people who rescued uh, rescued people from the violence, etc. So that spirit is very much, it is also there. And hopefully it is, I think the, the huge support to Dr. Anwar who uh, runs Al Hind Hospital from the community, from people, I just read an article yesterday where he said that if one member of my family gets a little bit sick, then, you know, 10 people come and say, how can we help? Now, for me, at this stage, I take heart from those kinds of, uh, you know, that true human compassion, kindness, which is very much there, alive and well, but I think is being... Uh, I mean, it's not being able, unfortunately, we don't have a state apparatus which is allowing all of that to blossom. It's allowing other things to come forward. So I would say the documentation effort on its own is something which is there and can be preserved. I do wonder about intervention right now, just because it can so easily get twisted and turned into something else. Uh, and I don't have an answer for that. Um, but I think more and more just reinforcing of this same, you know, the, the messaging which is coming out that this was a targeted, this was something which was targeted and it was planned. Um, and it came in the context of so many things, in especially, you know, the criminalization of dissent, the criminalization of legitimate democratic protest, all of that, uh, which has led to this. Um, so, I mean, I also, we all wrote up the recommendations together, and we do certainly believe in those and would want those to go forward. So, you know, the formation of a committee, etc., I feel that if anything can go forward, it has to be court monitored in some way. I think that's the only way uh, in which maybe we might have some measure at some levels, maybe individual cases will be dealt with. But this systemic probing of the Delhi police and its role and, you know, that is a very, very big issue. It needs to be done with a lot of preparation and also in an atmosphere in which it is conducive for it to be done. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Devika Prasad ji. I think uh, documentation is very important. And uh, Dr. Khan is here. Uh, I was in his office some time back and I asked him, Sir, we write a lot, but nothing really happened. And he said, Aap kaam ji or, or usko document karke So I think uh, when, we when we have documented something, this time I don't think that the government will be able to delete it because it is there, it is in the memory of the people. I think I have also, also taken notes of that. So many people have taken notes of that. This uh, uh, discussion is there. So this time they won't be able to delete it. I think that uh, we should not see police in isolation. Police is very much part of uh, the political uh, agenda. I think uh, if, uh, okay, uh, we, we call it that it's a democracy and in democracy institutions has to be autonomous, but, but in a country where the rule is not based on justice, when the rule is based on hatred, when the rule is based on excluding people, when the rule is based on one religion, one culture, one nation, and it is even not one religion, it is a group of few castes, a group of few upper caste people who are 
trying to control everything so political angle is also very important so unless seen at political level changes the police uh, will not uh, start behaving well i think this is one of one issue i think i i i consider is very important another issue is also which i have done some study representation at police mm. the representation of muslims and deprived uh, communities is very abysmal i think muslim constitutes around 13 to 14% at this moment and in uh, in 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 police at all india level they are just 6 to 7% and unfortunately the government has stopped after uh, the new regime took over publishing data about muslim so this is also a big uh, issue and we should not forget that when independence uh, uh, we achieved independence muslims were in good number in police and army and then some discrimination began and 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 slowly and slowly and gradually they were reduced to 3 and 4 and 5 and 6% so for me i think this is just my suggestion that political issue and representation should be kept at the center and those people who are talking about police reforms so like prakash rai and other people uh, prakash singh i think they they do, do not touch this issue now i think uh, uh, we should uh, move to another level question and sir and i will read out uh, uh, we have received some questions i would read out and briefly i think uh, uh, if the question is directed to a particular person that person will reply and if it is not directed that any panelist any uh, any member of the panelist can uh, speak and after that we will give maybe 2 minute or 3 minute uh, to each of uh, uh, a speaker to give concluding uh, uh, remarks and after that we will wind up this discussion so let me start with uh, dr khan sagar choudhury i think uh, mr sagar choudhury from karwa he has sent one question sir uh, i would request dr khan to elaborate on his communication with delhi government police and supreme court during riots and after the riots i would request him to be a specific to whom he spoke to and what was the response he got from lg police commissioner delhi government's prosecution law department during the spam span of last 4 months since the riots thanks big question sir actually if you are talking about the northeast riots we uh, started taking uh, note of it and interest and writing uh, from the 24th itself to the police to the police commissioner to the lg to the chief minister to the deputy chief minister uh, and to the area dcp and this is all recorded in our uh, latest annual report so i would uh, ask mr sagar to to uh, to check this report and it is online of course with the papers that he has uh, and he will find all these details uh, not just of these also earlier also when the jamia milia for attack and people of the jamia were attacked on the 15th of december last year we also took took very uh, much interest very active interest and this also is all uh, uh, mentioned and documented in that annual report so i would like him uh, to read that report and and any file he will find a lot uh, uh, in that report but uh, as he said what was their response usually there was uh, Uh, no response or the response was not uh, uh, adequate satisfactory like the response from the, the from the from the police for instance when the way we asked them why you are uh, uh, arresting uh, uh, all these youth uh, without any charges or in all that they said that no 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 and we we arrest only when there are specific charges which i think which was not correct but this was the, the, the this was their answer i think uh, sir thank you very much uh, sumit anand uh, i think he has sent uh, a question and i would like to read it out it has not been directed at any person so i think devika prasad ji or samsad ji i think uh, you can take up this question or you both can speak uh, and let me read it out mr sumit anand an order signed by a special cp commissioner police dated july 8 asking the delhi police to go 
soft on Hindus and remain alert to the feelings of the Hindus community while investigating the pogrom? Doesn't that put a question mark on the impartiality of the investigation and police and displays the ability of the police to implicate one community at the cost of another? I think we are discussing the same issue um, uh, for some time. But yes, I think if you want to say something or add something, uh, uh, you can join. Devika ji or Mr. Samsad? Devika ji, you want to say something? Sir. Actually, I talked. You go ahead, sir. See, uh, I'll follow you. The entire entire background that we have uh, we have given and we have documented in the report, including the facts which were which were shown on television camera, etc., about the role of police and the narration testimonies of the victims. They they all challenge the role of police. They challenge the uh, impartiality of police. Now, in this background, the police says that I have arrested 1400 uh, persons and I will disclose the name. That itself says so many things. I don't need to get into uh, this issue. In this background, this is complete brazenness of police coming up with this that see it is giving an indication as if you have done enough arrest of one community and if you are eyeing on the other community please stop this is not acceptable this is not done this is too much and this letter itself should be the sole reason to transfer the entire investigation to an independent SIT this is how I think about this Devika ji. So, uh, actually, I talked about this special CP's uh, letter in uh, my own, I mean, not letter, but order, in fact, in my talk. And uh, again, I mean, you know, just, uh, I think we should also just recognize that the Indian Express put this on its front page so that it actually came into the public domain that this was, this is an order which was issued. Uh, on this question of, you know, not disclosing arrests. Now, on not disclosing FIRs, maybe you can. They, there is a little bit of leeway because the the there is a Supreme Court judgment which lays down that all FIRs are to be uploaded on the state police website. But it gives the police some discretion, uh, a higher officer some discretion to decide that if a case is deemed sensitive, they will not upload it. Now we can. I mean, we don't have to argue about what is you know. But the point is, is that that it, they're allowed that discretion uh, to say that so we will not upload. Um, and I think, and that's the argument and the rationale that the Delhi police is taking to not upload FIRs relating to the violence cases. On arrests and not disclosing arrests, this is in fact a violation of law. The DK Basu, the, uh, a famous case of the, and, uh, in which the Supreme Court laid down guidelines uh, to prevent, in fact, illegal arrest or, you know, custodial violence called DK Basu versus State of West Bengal. Detailed guidelines were given. Many of those guidelines have also now come into law. So they're not just the, they don't have the force of law just by being a judgment of the Supreme Court, guidelines by the Supreme Court, but also by statute. One of those provisions is that every person who is arrested, their name and uh, the, the offenses for which they are being arrested and the arresting officer, all of those names, etc., must be put up at the district police control room. Uh, it hasn't in the DK Basu guidelines, it actually says every 12 hours. So it, there is a legal mandate on the police to disclose the names and where people are being kept at the district level uh, for every arrest. And the Delhi police has not even attended to that provision of law. The Delhi police actually does indicate it gives uh, daily arrest reports on its uh, website. But, you know, you have to you have to search by district and it may not always be complete. So uh, so. 
already, I mean, it's violation on, you know, it's legal violation on legal violation that's also happening here. And this, I agree with sir in terms of the reading of this order that it smacks of a uh, bias towards, you know, it's not just a bias towards a community, but it's also in this question of giving due the, it's due care and precaution to be made while, to be taken while making arrests. Because one community is feeling resentful, one community is feeling pressured. This messaging, and it's a contradiction in terms that you, you begin an order by saying one community is fe feeling resentful. So let's ensure that we make no arbitrary arrests at all. That's a contradiction, isn't it? You're starting with privileging one community and then trying to you know, sort of cover it up by saying, okay, well, let's just, you know, we should ensure that there would be no arbitrary arrests anywhere. And uh, I mean, you can argue that this, it goes absolutely against the spirit of Article 14 and equal protection of the law, which all, everyone is, is entitled to in this country. Um, and the police are mandated to uphold. So it's like Sir said, just this order alone is ground enough to ensure, to say that this is not an impartial in investigating agency. I think- uh, Just to add two lines, uh, yes, yes. has uh, very beautifully explained it. See, the, uh, the judgment of 2016, which gives the discretion to the police that they can withhold uh, certain FIRs. See, that judgment indicates in which area you can withhold uh, the FIRs and, and not make it public. They have explained that in cases of terrorism, insurgency, rape, and POXO. So these are four indications that have been given in the judgment where the police has to take a decision whether this is sensitive or not. Secondly, I am not saying that that discretion could not be exercised to see the other sensitive cases. Yes, you can do that. But again, there is an issue that you are selectively disclosing certain information that suits you or the system. Whereas when somebody wants complete impartiality, you take garb of some Supreme Court judgment which is primarily for certain area, not in general area. So that is also a matter of concern everywhere. These, these are the issues, you know, the, the, uh, when you start examining everything in details, you find these kind of problems. Sir, uh, we have to take uh, a few questions uh, together because uh, we are already going out of the time. So uh, Mr. Dharmaraj Kumar, uh, he has uh, sent a question and uh, he has said, again, we are discussing the same thing, that th the people, the leaders who were responsible for giving hateful speeches, they should be arrested. I think this is his concern, very valid and very genuine concern. Nitisha Khalso, uh, Khalko has also said that uh, conviction should happen, that uh, uh, people should be arrested, those who are responsible. And uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Shahid Mayo, he has sent uh, uh, a question and I, I should read it out. Sir, the dubious role of the police and media is well known. How could you see the role of judiciary in the aftermath of Delhi riots? My concern is that, uh, that even the judiciary is much doubted domain now, so to say, that the higher ups are the controlled and the lower rung too much corrupt and biased. You may be the what may be the possible implications for any possible implications towards attaining the justice to the victims of the tragic uh, rights. Basically, he's saying that uh, there is a contradiction. People at the top are being controlled. People at the low, they are corrupt. So these questions are very much related and much of uh, uh, what much of uh, answers that could be could possibly be to these questions we have already said. Sir, if you want to add something to what we have already said, 
you can come forward is it for me hello 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 are you i do you want to an answer from me uh, sir anybody can take up okay it's question sir anybody or briefly all all of you can speak very briefly yes dr khan you uh, i think you begin uh, advocate shamsha saab can 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 tackle this better than me see uh, there are certain observations uh, which a uh, few of the participants have raised and we have uh, answered in details but uh, yes i agree uh, that's what justice uh, delhi high court judge felt about that uh, why fir should not be registered against the person who has instigated the whole lot and uh, that has taken 54 lives so so it is not only uh, we as citizens of this country feel like even the institution like high court felt about it but the police and the solicitor general says that it is uh, there is no actionable evidence and that's where we have to fight we have to see the society uh, and and the institution in um, in a perspective that see uh, ultimately we have to uh, we have to uh, see that these things are not repeated in future if you ignore such a serious issue and the police can ignore the the, the political masters can ignore see i i would tell you one thing see uh, for last 5 6 years there were uh, a series of lynching taking place in in the entire country and what one particular community was being victimized uh, in much more larger number than other other people but ultimately some day came when the police itself became victim in bulandshahar and that is very very serious issue same way if you see if you talk about general crime what has happened in kanpur uh, a group of eight police persons were were put to death at one go why why you can't wake it wake up in advance to see that a person facing 60 cases can't be arrested because of favoritism because of certain illegal considerations because certain um uh, you know uh, uh, instructions given by political masters whereas for petty theft you keep people in jail for years and years there was there, there that akshardham temple um, uh, attack of 2001 in which there were 16 people who were arrested and and ultimately they were kept in jail for about 14 years 13 years ultimately supreme court uh, uh, decided this matter saying that they were not involved and thereafter these people go to the court or related people go to the court saying that sorry you have ruined my life this police system has ruined my life now you direct them to grant compensation to us the court says that sorry this will this will this was oral observation of of justice deepak mishra said uh, saying that sorry sorry we can't do this this will uh, this will affect the morale of the police system so every day police is refusing to register fir despite the uh, despite the binding direction of the supreme court in lalita kumari case why the court is not taking contempt uh, contempt uh, uh, notice against these people once they get to know that this has happened so there are lapses there are there are lapses on the um, at the level of police there are lapses on uh, at the level of bureaucracy there are the, the lapses also on the uh, uh, at the level of court system obviously politics the politicians play this entire issue for their political benefit so they are certainly beneficiary of it and they can't they will not take right action at right time so these are all the issues and and like uh, like devika ji has also said and, and and i also emphasize this issue the time that we are passing through is very peculiar see it is not as if it was not there earlier most of the uh, communal rights uh, issues have been handled in almost in a similar fashion but right now it's uh, the, the 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 kind of intensity these these issues have gone and uh, got 
and the kind of brazenness that we see all around that is too much and we will have to wake up otherwise those police were responsible they were hit upon by the uh, by the general public and they were killed so you never know if you if you condone these issues then certainly this is going to bounce back on the very institution itself and we all should be worried about it thank you i think uh, sir we are getting more and more questions so i think we have to close it by 7 o'clock uh i don't know and then concluding remarks uh you should also give so you can take a pen and a paper and you can uh, note down the questions and anybody can respond a few yeah, abhi questions abhi. have come up hello yes yeah abey bhai so time is already more so by 7 we have to end this okay uh, so by 7 so o'clock we have to end it we can take the concluding words so i think we don't have any time to uh, to to take uh, questions sir uh, i began discussion with you dr zafrul islam khan this time i am uh, taking another route i will start from devika ji you give your concluding remark and after that uh, uh, advocate samsad sahab and then dr zafrul islam khan yes devika ji very brief Two yeah. minutes, not more yeah. than that, yeah. or less than that. <laughs> I'll be less than that. Uh, I mean, the only thing you know, unfortunately, it's it's also difficult to be uh, to end on a hopeful note. But um, I would say that I think, in terms of just this issue of documentation, I think what we've tried to do with the support um, of the Minorities Commission is one effort, strong effort at documentation, and I've noticed that you know there has been a lot of there's been comment on the media's role, etc. But I just want to highlight here that I think the um, the very courageous independent media. both international and domestic and you know i'm thinking of uh, so you know uh, places like the quint and caravan who have truly been i mean they are building an archive of uh, certainly state complicity in action connivance etc in uh, in what happened in delhi uh, february uh, in in this time and that's also something which i think it is going to be something which at least we have it and it's there it you know and it can't be it anything can be refuted uh but i mean it is there and it's based on on very good leg work etc um and it comes from people it comes from individual uh stories uh so and I also documentation I have, to, I, i have to make an yeah, intervention yeah i'm sorry yes, okay yes advocate uh, samsat so, sahab very briefly uh i have uh, i have stated a uh, lot of things which uh, can be uh, also taken as concluding remarks but um, at the end i must say that uh, either way you look at it whether it is communal violence whether it is pogrom we all need to take lessons from the past and we should always take a stand which somehow goes or is a step forward in achieving the larger justice to the victims so that in future such violences don't take place and for that the responsibility lie on all of us whether we are uh, uh, individual citizens the uh, academicians press obviously large part of it goes on police and uh, uh, and uh, and the government thank dr. you dr khan dr khan yeah i think uh, uh, at the end i would like to say that the kind of attention that this uh, riot has 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 received Uh, from the media international and national as well and from civil society from legal fraternity and from intellectuals in the country i think this will uh, go a long way uh, to stop uh, the repetition of this kind of violence in the future i think uh, this kind of attention uh, that uh, the riots of uh, uh, february got internationally uh, is unprecedented and i i, I think that uh, in a way uh, this will put uh, a break i'm mean, not a full break but somehow 
I think it will affect the future planning of people who are uh, planning and executing this kind of projects. Uh, that will be a good thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Democracy Dialogue and Center for Peace Studies. We have been talking about uh, uh, the fact-finding report, about the fact-finding report, which has been prepared under the leadership of uh, advocate M.R. Samsad, who was uh, just team with us. And uh, Devika Prasadji was uh, one of the members. And Dr. Zafrul Islam Khan, as a chairperson of that uh, uh, of Delhi Minority Commission, has set up that uh, fact-finding report. The fact-finding report has given very important um, conclusion, evidence, empirical evidence. It says that those people who have been charged, seated, put behind the bar, they are not responsible for communal violence that took place in February, in which around 55 people have died. In fact, it was well organized, well planned. That plan was to divert the attention from a mass movement that was being building up against sectarian and religion-based uh, CAA. Thank you very much, Dr. Zafrul Islam Khan, MR Samsad, Advocate Devika Ji. I think it's pleasure talking to you and learning from you. And I think I'm requesting organizer to hold another meeting because uh, uh, Delhi Minority Commission have made another very important report on the conditions of Muslims women in Northwest, North, uh, Northeastern District. Um, I have read some um, pages of that. I think we should hold another meeting on that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Report on, report on, uh, on six, uh, those who are victims of 84 roids. That is also a wonderful report. Yeah, that should also be discussed in public domain. This is my suggestion. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. We thank lost you, uh, similar. Thank you. Thank, you. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, Abhay. Thank you, Samjha Saab, Zafar Saab, Devika Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.